This is Chris Kelly through Peak Trainer 1 Knee Stability Trails. All right, and when we say knee stability, we want the knee to be a stable anchor that provides support in the presence of change. Right? So I don't want my knee to rotate and flex or hinge forward or back necessarily when I move so much. I want to get that from my hips and my ankles while the knee is kind of remained anchored in it. All right? So what we want to coach with the knee are two motions. We want the concept of what is called a vertical tibia. Right? With a vertical tibia, the difference would be when we see more of what we call an angle tibia, somebody squats down, the knees come out over the toes, and the problem with that is that the knee joint, which has very little support, is, is taking the brunt of that motion. So I'm hinging from the knees at that time, and what has to happen is I come forward onto the ankles. So when I lack mobility either in my hips or my ankles, I do that. Okay, the difference, what we want to coach is a vertical tibia, okay, where we have this hip hinge where I stick my butt out, I sit back on my heels, and my knees stay over my toes, right? You're not always gonna get that 100% perfectly, and that's not the goal, <clears throat> but when we're coaching exercises and loading up exercises, we wanna drive the brunt of the force to the hips in order to really power that movement, all right? So that begins on the ground, all right? Because what I want to do, what I want to do with a client um, that is that has problems maybe maintaining this vertical tibia or somebody that is very uh, what we call knee dominant, meaning the front of their legs are going to be stronger than the back of their legs. We just want them to feel their butt. All right? What I'm going to do is just start the client on their side. I'll put my hands on the side. I'll, I'll coach them to start with the side of the client. All right? So I start my side here, tighten my abs. All right? I'm just coaching them to move from this lower portion of their body. All right? So um, my abs are tight. I'm just opening my hip up and coming down. All right, what I also have them do is put their hand on the butt cheek there, right here on the side, just to kind of press into this muscle and make sure this fires. Throughout this exercise, I'm asking them, where do you feel that? All right, if they say, my inner thigh, or anywhere other than this area, this sort of side butt cheek here, then I know that some substitution is going on. So I just want to come up here. I can even coach them to hold and lower very slowly. All right? They'll, once they start to feel that muscle burn, that tells me that, okay, we're getting a little bit more, a bit more active in terms of you know, this is the muscle that we want to work. We're biasing this with a little what we call activation work. We're just telling this muscle to turn on a little bit. And this is something that we would put in a warm up. From here, we'll perform exercise, an exercise, a exercise for the butt or hip extension, such as the glute bridge, where I just rise up. I'm extending my hips up. I'm pressing through my heels. All right, and I'm coming up and down. And again, this is just the idea of maintaining, a, or pressing through the heels and patterning, okay, what will eventually become a squat. So again, tighten the abs, press, and come down. All right, from there, I would move into a half kneeling position. All right, because here what we can do is train movement from the hips and kind of disassociate that from the knee. So what I want to do, have the client press into a surface, fire their core, actually switch sides here so you can see me a little bit better, and just lean forward from the hip, right? If you see that they're leaning back and their knee is coming way forward, then we're not trying, we're trying to coach against that. We're trying to get away from that. So I will even push them forward so everything stays nice and straight and most of the motion is coming from my hip versus anywhere else, okay? So my knee is coming forward to some degree, but it's only moving in line with my hips. So the knee is not leading, right? The hip is kind of driving the motion. So I'll just come forward and back. And I'll be coaching the client to tighten from their butt cheek, or tighten their butt cheek here while pressing into a surface and tightening their abs, right? And this is just cueing the client to use their hip to generate the motion and to, and to fire the right muscle. So when we're in a true squatting position, or a split squatting position, they know what to do. Now, when we're squatting, an exercise that I like to teach this, okay, for clients to come up with their knees is a box, all right? It's a simple implement. We can teach the client to sit back, all right? For those that lack weight range of motion, we're just going to start with a pad um, on the, or a, we have an Eric's pad here. We'll use carpet squares, pillows, whatever you have access to, but to, then just simply coach them to sit down, all right? When I do that, I simply shift my weight back. That's the easiest way possible to teach clients to use their hips because if they don't, they fall on their butt, right? We don't want that. So in this position, the client's sitting down and their knees are way far forward, we can simply adjust them, move back out, make sure we have this nice vertical tibia, and then stand straight up. What I can also do is put the client next to a wall to just kind of act as a counterbalance. Maybe they don't have the strength to stand up and they're leaning forward, I can have them push into the wall and come up and down. I can also use a device like a TRX 
to help you with that. So the TRX will just be waving a little bit here. And again, I just sit back. All right, once the client gets better at this movement, all we do is we increase the range of motion. All right, so we take this away a little bit, and we just coach them to do touch and go. I like them to just actually sit down at first so I can adjust their position and put them back into place. It also deloads the knees a little bit after each rep. From there, the progression would be to simply stick the butt out, touch and go, and come back up. So I'm just tapping at this point. I'm not actually sitting down. Uh, the final progression, or once we start to load it up, we're going to start loading what we call goblet squat. Before we start to do back squats and front squats, I find that this helps to act as a counterbalance and helps people sit back a little bit more. So a goblet squat would look like this. Give me one second here. We'll take a kettlebell or a dumbbell. We'll hold in a goblet position and we'll sit back. All right? What this is doing is just acting as a counterbalance to help me to sit back into a deep squat and fire my core while maintaining this vertical tibia. All right? Now when we're coaching the single leg version of this or a split squat, what I like to do is start near a wall. Right? So if the client is somebody that does a split squat, their knee comes way far forward, I'll simply set up here next to a wall I want you to stay behind the wall. So I'm just sitting straight down and coming up. So what I'm trying not to do is tap the wall. Okay, and that's a very clear indicator of whether or not that's actually happening. So you can put your hand in front of, your, in front of their knee. You can use a chair or whatever it may be, but just use some kind of an object to block the client in the proper position. Physically move them if you need to, whatever it may be, but they don't know right in the beginning. So doing that is going to help them to recognize you know, what to do and then eventually they'll learn on their own so we can take away these training band-aids where then you know, we can just move into normal split squats, progress into things like rear foot elevated squats where back foot is on the step, you know, maintain this vertical tibia, and even come to things like single leg squats where I'm coming up and down. I'll use a pad here because I've got to find the strength to do that. So sit back, come up just like that while maintaining that vertical tibia. Now, the other issue that we often see is knee collapse, uh, valgus. So squat down, the knees come in. Okay, the question is what do we do there, All right? For that, we're going to go through the same basic progression. What we do is just put a band, a mini band around the knees, all right? I like this. It's easy to, uh, it's easy to execute. It immediately tells the client, kind of turns the right muscles on. So the first thing we're gonna do just for awareness sake once again, it's a clamp. Okay, I, got, I can have a client hold out against the band, press into this area and fire their muscle, and then start to just generate some movement. All right, from there, we're gonna do, we're actually going to exaggerate the compensation because with the band around my knees in this position, it's actually pulling me in, all right? So it looks like I'm, I'm trying to, it's trying to make me exaggerate my compensation. All I would coach the client to do is press out against the band, all right? Don't let that band pull you in. Push your butt up into the air, push, push out against the band, right? Immediately, this builds awareness of what we're trying to do in a squat because this is just a low level trip that's gonna do that, all right? Now, once we can, once we have this, once the client's able to feel this in the proper areas, meaning the side of their hips and their butt, then we can move to standing positions and do what's called, uh, and, do this, and repeat the same process, right? So again, I would have them squat down to a box while just coaching them to push out against the band. Don't let the band pull you in. So I'm pushing out against this. I'm coming up and down. And again, it's just cueing me to use my hips in the proper fashion. We'll, all, we'll also do standing clamps. Oftentimes, uh, for many clients, we'll get collapsed in on one side. For that, we like to do things like just a standing clamp where, again, I'm standing in this position and I'm just pushing out. It, 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 and for somebody that collapses in on one side, we still might do this uh, RT squat we might have them just clam on one side just to activate that muscle, kind of build awareness, let them feel it a little bit more, and go through the same progression. Now for split squats, it's a little bit different just in the sense that we will take the clients into a split position and if we could actually loop a TheraBand around the knee, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as the trainer, therapist, or coach, you're off to the side, 
band like this, pulling the knee in. Okay, and again, you simply coach the client to push out against the bands and come up and down. And so that would be a single leg form of reactive neuromuscular training. Um, you can do that with multiple single leg exercises. I like a split squat best because it's supported and it's easy to teach. All right, but those give you some ideas of how you can coach this idea of vertical tibia as well as preventing this knee valgus and generate the proper knee stability.